Perhaps you've reached the age when you decide you would like to do the things that you want to do. For me, that age is 56. I'm hoping that in some way I can inspire you to finally do the things you've always wanted to do. Go ahead and have some good clean fun. Life is too short to let it slip away unchallenged. Today we are taking this beautiful piece of someone else's creativity over to the ranch. Let's just see how that goes down. So this is my buddy's cool 1938 Ford green <laughs> automobile, uh, Cadillac V8. I don't know a lot about cars, but I do know I've always wanted to drive one of these. <laughs> so we took it down the highway. It's fantastic. It's a lot of fun. The gears are a little rough, but it's a lot of fun. We're gearing up for a shoot tonight. We're going to do a little video photo shoot tonight with this. And one of our cooler Fender guitars, we'll bring a couple guitars along and we're going to take some great shots. So come along, we'll have some fun. <laughs> All right, today we're hanging out with Crush from Killer Sticks. He's a uh, local fella himself. He's created some ax th uh, throwing axes for the sport. Um, started his business, wanting it to grow, wanting to see the success of other people in other local sources. So uh, give us a little introduction of yourself and what, what we have going on here. And My we'll name is Crush. Uh, I started axe throwing about maybe a year and a half ago. Um, during COVID, I started right before COVID and I really was into having like working on axes and, and having fun like modifying them. Originally just started out as buying some handles and drawing on them. Uh, during COVID happened and there was no throwing for about eight months, everything got shut down. Uh, just got tired and bored of gaming or doing nothing around the house and decided on uh, working on some axes, sold a couple to my local friends and then uh, I met up uh, online with a friend, uh, I fell in love with an axe that a friend made, uh, Vin Crescendo from Philly Axe Co in Philadelphia helped me out uh, learning how to use skateboard veneers from a company called Rocket uh, back in Ontario. They use uh, wooden veneers and they dye it all the way through and so when you sand it the color doesn't get lost. So we ended up converting skateboard handles or skateboard veneers into uh, axe handles and we wanted to create some kind of personalization for the sport. Crush is going to give us a breakdown on how the axes are made from start to finish, uh, all his local uh, source, outsourced uh, products. Uh, Crush, take it away. Hey, um, so basically when I built Killer Sticks, I originally wanted to make it a local based business. Um, so like the leather work is actually made from a, a friend of mine who does leather work himself uh, and he, I'm bringing him into the Killer Sticks. Uh, I helped him with it too, but basically he'll be building our premier line of leather work. Uh, for the axes itself, the heads are usually either outsourced by myself finding them or if I go through Warrior Axes or um, uh, Bush Canada from BC for the Agdor Hedge, which is the best competitive head. Uh, but the the handles itself, they're, the wood is outsourced locally to Windsor Plywood. Uh, they help me out with getting my maple, my ash, my oak, anything that I need for the cores, the centerpiece that help, holds it together. Uh, then they're laminated after 24 hours uh, with Rocket Veneers. Uh, Rocket's a company out of Toronto who uh, vacuum seals and dyes uh, wooden veneers. So they're, they buy all their stuff locally. They're uh, within Canada. It's a Canada-based business. Uh, so they ship it out to me. I'm able to glue them all together, laminate them. Uh, after 24 hours, they're soaked down with... Uh, I haven't found a local... Um, uh, oil. Uh, some people use uh, boiled linseed oil uh, for the handles. I prefer uh, a type of wax. Uh, right now I've been using Howard products. I've been speaking with um, uh, walrus oil in the States, but I'm trying to find something locally because I don't like to have that soaked dark look. I like to have that bright, bright core um, white color to it so it stands out next to the veneers. Uh, but yeah, other than that, uh, everything is, I try to keep it as close to Canada as possible because at the end of the day, after COVID, we need to support our local businesses. Yeah. So there, and now here we are. Yep. So you make the, or you have these made. Yep. 
and then the axe heads themselves. Yeah, so the sport's growing right now and a lot of companies are getting into it. Um, right before, I originally was uh, going to local places like uh, flea markets and just normal stores and just buying heads and uh, cleaning them up vintage, uh, restoring them, and then putting them on original handles. Uh, I recently partnered up with uh, Warrior Axe in Ontario. Uh, Warrior Axe Throwing is a, a venue that's been around for, for ages and they just recently started producing their own heads. Uh, so I'm uh, sponsored through them. Uh, we can start offering competitive heads through their venue that's uh, legal for all competitive IETF tournaments. Okay, so, right on. And then other than that, we usually just sell uh, restored heads or if you send your own in, I can handle it for you. Sweet, sweet. And then, so for your business side of things, where do you kind of want to see yourself like growing and how, how do you want to get there? So What's your kind of main goal? I come from another sport, uh, paintball, and I used to play that professionally and, and uh, go to the States for tournaments. Oh. And I would really, really like to see that at that level. Um, axe throwing is, is kind of a baby right now. They started growing up uh, with ESPN and another league that, that runs that. Um, but they need to develop even bigger in venues and tournaments uh, to the point where it's international and uh, easy accessible for uh, the local thrower that wants to get into it. Nice. So, now you want it to just bust it loose, let it grow? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, would, I would really like to see it on TV full time. I know it's on ESPN um, for special events, but it, oh, needs okay, to be, cool. it needs to be developed into more of a culture. Um, it's a great sport for people who uh, don't want to spend a lot of money. A lot of times, like hockey is a huge like yeah. uh, entry point. You spend thousands and thousands of dollars. With this sport, it's, it's literally a $20 an hour throw to go learn. And then axes are anywhere from 100 to, you could get some builders up to $600. That's um, not terrible. And you yeah, can use that axe for quite a Exactly, time, you can right? use it for chopping, throwing. Uh, oh. A lot of people sometimes buy these just for camping, just to, to have something different. Oh, but cool. uh, specifically, Killer Six is based for competitive throwing. For throwing. Yeah. Balanced, is that much of a thing for your, like yes. between chopping so, and throwing? Uh, yes, it is. So throwing, you want to have more balance, lighter weight, uh, lighter woods, uh, better rotation. So it's all about having proper weight at the top, having it rotate properly. Uh, for cutting, you mostly would just want to have a lot of weight in the shoulder and throwing it down so it cracks the wood. This one, you're, you're not looking to split it, you're looking at it to sink in. So it's more not about the handle, it's more about how the head is shaped in the context, like the uh, contour of it. Okay. So... Huh. Interesting. Cool. Yeah, so a lot of people have preferences for handles. So like I'm and it's more of a newer style. I yeah. prefer straight handles. Okay. So straight handle big axe is, is fairly new. Um, the straight handle has been around for a while. Big axe, it's, it's uh, fairly new. Different shoulder styles we do now. Uh, it's mostly a lot of the companies do mostly traditional, which is just straight down. Okay. Uh, I've learned that people want more personality and more character to their axes. So we added a few more different like shoulder styles, different lengths, different like sizes, widths. So we can basically build whatever you want to your custom order. Oh wow, so, sweet. Yeah. That's pretty cool. And then you have a little bit of a, more of a curve to that yeah, one Yeah, so we have two kind of, I wanted to make it more of a industrial way to buy them. Uh, lately it's been more of reaching out to your local builder and asking for a custom build and him slowly building it. I wanted to build more of like a store style where you would have multiple axes and options and you could select from what you like. Yeah. So totally. I have like the more expensive style which is the skateboard veneers with the hardwoods and then I also offer for people who are looking to get into it who want a little extra yeah. is a, a custom series oh, where it's okay. basically a more, more basic beginner entry level thrower. Yeah. but it's based on like a normal hardwood okay. so instead of it being laminated it's more custom stained uh, I use oils stains uh, water solvable paints things like that to, to just kind of design what I can or what you want so sweet yeah that's pretty cool with this uh, business and as it grows are you wanting to see it more on YouTube itself like or are you wanting to see it more on a professional level of um, of like you know bigger TV like series kind of um i actually kind of want to see it go in a different direction we do have the professional series and we need to grow that aspect but i think we need to build more of a culture and community in it um and bringing more of the youth okay uh, it seems yeah. to be really focused in on a, a, a certain group right now and a certain age more older buying beer like going out and it's like a 
an adult darker version of darts yeah a cooler yeah, version yeah. of darts basically yeah, right totally, totally. but the thing is, is that we need to get that the more younger group into it in order to develop the sport mm. so like kids like 14 15 can go throwing i want to see them have hey after school they have an axe Obviously secure, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? can't you be bringing that to school. <laughs> but after school or something like that, being an axe program or something, if they want to go over there and throw for an hour, it's a sport where it doesn't cost a lot of fees, being yeah. that once you buy your axe, you already have an axe, you have that tool, you don't need to pay forward. Uh, the wood doesn't cost a lot. You can do it basically anywhere. You can do it out camping. I built myself a portable rig so I can go take it in my truck and go out camping. Oh, there uh, you go. I wanted to see it more of uh, more generalized. Yeah. People kind of think of it as like a niche, like kind of a one-time fun kind of thing, where it's actually really competitive and it's it's better than things like shuffleboard or going Not. to have other sports, right? So, I, I would honestly say for a cheap, easy, go have some fun game, it's probably one of the best you can do. No doubt. Yeah, I've I've gone before and it's like, yeah, like it doesn't cost you a bunch of money. You're yeah. going out, you're having a good time. And uh, it's something that you need to, I think we should have, like we did it with a, as a business, as a, what do you call it? Team group. Team, yeah. And it's, it's great building. for, and it for like, communities and yeah. building that friendship. And, and honestly, like I got into my local venue to meet new people and, and have some fun. And I can consider half of them probably some of my best friends. Yeah. They are fantastic people who are in this sport right now. And where are some of the places that you like to go and uh, throw some axes besides uh, your own? So True North is actually our venue in True uh, Red Deer. Uh, they have one in Lethbridge. Uh, that's my home venue. Love them. Um, Everyone there is fantastic. They have multiple leagues. They just reopened for COVID. Uh, there's also Woodshed in Sylvan, which is fantastic. I've noticed great family groupings there. Uh, Rival in Airdrie. Uh, there's all over the world. Canada just started opening venues. Uh, there's a chain called Battle. Uh, but mostly it's huge in the States right now. Uh, okay. To the point where there's dozens and dozens of venues in each city so we really need to start catching up yeah no doubt yeah is that something you're looking uh, at is getting into your own, <laughs> uh, own venue there's some plans on the table i won't say anything fair enough keep fair it enough. uh close to the <laughs> gotta see it you gotta yep. see it before it happens <laughs> exactly yeah. you don't want to uh jump the gun yep yeah. exactly fair enough fair enough <laughs> that's exciting so where can we find where can we find your axes online your, uh, I just your, opened uh, up an Etsy store, but uh, okay. you can find me at Instagram.com slash Killer Sticks. Okay. Uh, you can also find me on Etsy if you type in Etsy.com backslash shop slash uh, Killer Sticks. You can also find me there. Uh, I do also have a Facebook if you just type in Killer Sticks. Uh, and I'm also available at True North Venue. I have my own stand and my axes are for sale there. Uh, and we'll have a couple other venues to announce in the next couple weeks. Come along. Ooh, right on, yeah. Growing. That's what it's all about. <laughs> that's the plan. <laughs> that's that's awesome. Okay, thanks for uh, hanging out with us. Awesome, I was Appreciate glad to it. do this for you. Yeah, no, it was awesome. We'll, uh, we'll be in touch, we'll be around, we'll be doing some axe throwing for sure. Looking forward and I'll have to have you guys out there and uh, throw a couple of these. That sounds like a plan to me. Remember your favorite dinky toy from when you were a kid? That was the fastest car in the whole wide world, and you were the engine that made it move. In the late 70s, I owned my first vehicle, a 1948 Chevy one-ton. That truck taught me a lot and at a great price. Mostly I learned I was not destined to be a mechanic, but I did enjoy driving. Turns out as you grow older, life cycles back round, and at some point, if you work at it, you will find a way to make your childhood dreams come alive. I like the rustic nature of this old truck. Fact is, I like the imperfections as much as I like its perfections. The dings are a tip of the hat to a generation of aging. It's like a fine piece of art. I believe the frustrations in this life are the things that make you stronger. Getting to the place you want to be and realizing the goals you wish to achieve are the rewards for your efforts. 
Your creativity, your resilience, and your dogged determination is the fuel you need to make your life all that it can be. So, what's in the case? The guitar you see here is a vintage Fender 60th Anniversary Stratocaster reissue of a 1954 original. Only 1,954 were produced. Truly a thing of beauty. The finished checks and ultrafine surface cracks were typical of the guitars in this era. The nicks and dings of a road-worn guitar often add value to vintage pieces like these. Pretty sure it will be the same for us as we go over the speed bump of death and arrive on the other side. The scars acquired here will be our defining marks of a life well lived.